Welcome back to Daytime Ottawa. Hopefully you had an opportunity to watch our Red Blacks at least the first half last night because everything looked to be going well. Caleb Evans was playing actually some pretty darn good football. And then the second half, everything seemed to have fallen apart. Uh, it brought them to two and six so far in the season. We are joined by former CFL player Ken Avrer to talk all things Red Blacks. Ken, how you doing? Hi, Derek. I do well, despite the fact that the team lost last night. It was an interesting game because, as you mentioned, there's two parts of the game. Uh, the first part, we were world beaters for the most part. Second half, I think we got a better sense of what this football team is, is at this time. And uh, there's a great growth opportunity for the club. So it, it, not necessarily a bad loss, uh, but not a win. Yeah, and, you know, Caleb Evans, you know, after that first game, I think everybody got excited. Look at this young guy. He's never thrown a yeah. pass in the CFL before, and he looks so composed, and he did last night. But, I did, you know, is it is it the fact that he's a rookie? And he also had a pretty darn good Argos defense there last night. Yeah, it's, I think it's a combination of forces. One, that he played really well. He was an unknown sort of uh, factor or uh, that the, the Edmonton Elks couldn't really prepare for because there was no film on him. And so from a from a, a scheme standpoint, it was tough for the Elks to prepare and throw in the fact that the Elks is a pretty they're a pretty bad football team and offensive, and defensive and special teams. It was the perfect storm for Ottawa to bounce back and pick up their second victory of the season. But as you mentioned, the Argos were a different monster. And, and uh, I think they probably made some adjustments. Uh, Ottawa didn't really try to establish the run last night, which uh, played in favor of the Argos defensive scheme because they dropped more people and they. They got into the passing lanes, and they didn't really want to rush the quarterback to sack the quarterback. What they want to do, what they opt to do, is pressure the quarterback and make it tough for him to see through the passing lanes. And if you look at those two interceptions in the second half, that were really big turning points along with the block punt for the touchdown. One ball was deflected, another one was picked off by a linebacker uh, after uh, Evans had sort of hesitated and didn't trust his gut and throw to where he should have thrown in the first place. He looked off. He came away from a receiver, then he went back, tried to complete the pass to him, and it was picked off. And then that, that, def that defensive back gets his go-go gadgets going and scores a touchdown for the Argonauts. So uh, disappointing second half, but I saw some positive things as well in the first half. Yeah, and uh, before we get to some of those positives, Ken, I, I think something that's concerning, as you mentioned it, is that running game because they haven't gotten that running game mm -hmm. going at all through the first eight games. I mean, if you look at the stats, uh, you know, they're, they're not even coming yeah. close to the 100-yard 100 100 yard mark as a, as a team. Is that more a function of the talent at running back or the talent along the offensive line? I think it's a combination of forces. It's talent, but it's also will. It's also play calling and priorities in terms of what do you want to do? What can your quarterback do? What can your running back do? And I think Timothy Flanders uh, at the running back position has been a bit of a disappointment. He only ran for, I think, about 16 yards last night. And yeah. That's certainly not enough when you want to take the pressure off a young quarterback like Caleb Evans. So I think you've got to establish the run. And, and let's face it. Uh, even though the offensive linemen are big guys at 6'4", 6'3", 290, 300 pounds, it's tough to move the furniture in the living room when the furniture can hit you back. And that was the case with the Argos. They got a pretty good defensive line, and, and their goal is to make sure that the offensive line is busy so your linebackers can go make plays. That's football one-on-one on defense. You know that. I know that. My neighbor knows that. And uh, it's easy to say you want to accomplish certain things going into a game, but it's tough to do when it comes to the actual practical applica application. Uh, Ken, let's talk quarterback again. Caleb Evans, you know, if you look at mm -hmm. some of his you know, his numbers last night, you know, it was, what, 6.2 right. yards per play. He had 334 yeah. yards. We're going up against the Alouettes the next two games. These are two very important games if they want any hope of getting yeah. into the playoffs. Do they stick with Caleb or do they may, you know, perhaps look at Hodges, who they signed to a three-year contract? Obviously, signing him to a three-year yeah. contract means they have some faith in this guy. Well, I think they'll dress Hodges for one, and and I think they continue with with Evans, and but I don't think he has necessarily a short leash on him in terms of we're going to pull him if he doesn't fare well. I think Montreal is similar to Toronto in that Toronto was four and two or sort of five and four last night, but they weren't they didn't have an overwhelming record. Montreal right now is three and four. Many believe they'd be a better football team seven eight games into the season. So we're not quite sure what Alouette team you're going to get. The team that's lost some games they should win or a team that goes in and beats Hamilton pretty good and beats some of the good teams. And, and so it's a big two weeks. They play, what, on the 11th and on the 16th against Montreal. Yeah. 
and Hamilton plays Toronto. So there's a lot of things that can happen. It depends on who wins and loses those games where Ottawa can get themselves back into it. And it, it's going to take a good effort. I think Montreal is a pretty good football team. I actually think Montreal may be the better, the best football team in the East right now. And that's nothing against my old ha- Hamilton Tiger Cats. But uh, for Montreal, and you being a Montreal guy because you spent time there, Montreal yeah. can't afford to lose games to Ottawa. These are games that Montreal has to win. Ottawa, if they don't win, I don't think the fans are going to start burning down the village. They want to yeah. see a team that looks like they're confident and getting a little better and improving. For sure, Ken. Ken, thanks so much for joining us. Really appreciate it, and uh, we'll get in touch with you later on in the season. All right, don't go anywhere. Coming up after the break, we'll tell you how small businesses can introduce themselves to new homeowners in different communities here and around Ottawa.